Yes, we are bosses right now. <laughs> So I must reiterate that if you are feeling unwell and you've had a recent travel abroad or you've got a temperature or you're getting symptoms of cough and you just think you might have coronavirus, please, please, please call up your GP in advance, speak to the receptionist, they will direct you, if appropriate, to the correct testing centre, which is usually a hospital location, and you'll get the correct treatment there. All right, my first patient's just arrived. Maria? Hello, come in. <laughs> Hi Maria, looking lovely. How are you feeling in terms of uh, the coronavirus outbreak? How is it affecting you? Well look, naturally we're concerned. Um, our son is 11 years old and he had a bout of tonsillitis. So we've actually kept him away from school until his immune system starts to increase because we're not going to send him to school even with a slight cold. Mm. So until all the borders were blocked, we were very concerned. Mm about who we're getting into the lift with. Okay. It's a confined area and nobody was wearing masks. So we were very, very concerned until they locked down Australia and the borders because we were still getting people from New Zealand and China coming through different ways. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've found a way around it. Finally, Australia has taken a total closure and uh, we can feel a little more safe yeah. in that they've put all the precautions in place. If everybody washes their hands, keeps a distance from other people, and keeps their children home from school if they're unwell, so that it gives the children who are well a better chance. I just spoke with somebody who is from Italy, from Northern Italy, and as you'll know that Italy at the moment has got, uh, it's all under quarantine. There's loads of cases of coronavirus and lots of people are passing away sadly because of the disease. But so his initial presentation of symptoms were fever, fever over 39 degrees, so always 40, 40.1. He had chills, he was having body aches and uh, a cough as well. So that's prom that prompted him to go to the hospital, but they said because your age, you're under 60, unfortunately we can't bring you into the hospital, so you have to go home and manage it. So he went home and he, he sat at home and he had some, he had 600 milligrams of vitamin C, he had a whole concoction of other uh, complementary therapies and um, his symptoms actually got a little bit worse. So he reported to have worsening symptoms by means of a more of a chesty cough. So it sounded like he developed pneumonia. And um, according to this person, they said that actually he didn't have any antibiotics. He just settled down by himself and eventually he overcome this illness. And he's still coughing now, but his shortness of breath is a lot less severe than what it used to be. And he's able to have coherent conversation with his family. So I thought it was really interesting in terms of one, no antibiotics were given, and two, in terms of how the hospital turned people away who are quite young. His friend, he went to hospital and he actually developed quite severe pneumonia and he actually required to use a respirator. But what the doctors did over, over there is they gave him a very strong immunosuppressant drug, one that is used for patients who have uh, rheumatoid arthritis over here in Australia and then pretty much worldwide. And within 24 hours, his immune system actually recovered and actually he was out of ITU and out of a respirator within 24 hours. So. That's really interesting because at the moment there's a lot of people who are saying, you know, what do we use for coronavirus? How do we treat it? Is it antibiotics? Is it, um, you know, is it antiviral? Is it HIV medications? We're not too sure. So the fact that this person um, successfully got better on an immunosuppressant, well, that's actually really quite interesting. Now, one interesting thing that he did mention to me was that the reason potentially why Italy has got such a large outbreak is because they're still using cash. Now, as you know, people who use cash money, they are often, you know, transaction in cash and there's lots of germs on cash. And so nobody is washing their cash. Nobody is just sterilizing their cash. And perhaps that might be something that Australia is benefiting from is because we usually use touch and go. We use our uh, pay pass, F tops. We, we use our credit cards pretty much. We just tap on the screen and it's your own germs. You're not collecting it from somebody else. So I just thought it would be interesting to share with you guys. So in terms of one spread, so, um, transaction money think about money think about how you're transactioning what are you using using cash because clearly cash has got a lot of bugs on it two 
your how you're getting around your transportation public transportation again those poles do they ever get wiped down do those seats ever get wiped down probably not and final most is just making sure that you're always keeping your hands clean because regardless of whether you're using community transport public transport or regardless of whether you're um, using cash or whatever you're going about if as long as you maintain a good hand hygiene then that will essentially help you from picking up your bugs affected um, us personally because of where we live and it's affected our building there's been 29 ca 29 cancellations so far of holiday people tourists coming in mm -hmm. so I think it's affected every single business yeah. and a lot of people are not going to hospital or you know there's so much happening out there because of the coronavirus and the fear yeah I was just gonna say actually the anxiety at the moment of the coronavirus is it's really paramount it's very high at the moment so you mentioned about the lifts I have some patients who refuse to take the lift because they're just so scared of who's touching the buttons and who's going in the lifts right do you, is that an anxiety that's shared among you or do Absolutely. you feel Absolutely. Yeah. Well, because we live in a tourist building yeah. as well, um, we will actually wait if the lift has got quite a few people yeah. in there. Um, and our son doesn't go out of the house unless it's absolutely necessary. So I think that it has oh, the, the supermarkets, the frenzy, the fear. Mm. Um, it's really brought the people who are on a lower income in a a very troubled time financially because people who can afford to buy bulk do yeah. and then the that's why we have to put rationings mm -hmm. because the economic situation of the people that are losing their jobs and coming from middle class to then not having a job it's changing everyone completely and it's such a fear-based mm -hmm. society so once the news gets out there that we have this happening, everybody frenzy buys. Yeah. They can't yeah. seem to help themselves. It's true. It's very concerning times. I mean, we've all seen about the toilet paper. We've all seen the fights going on in the local supermarkets. You know, there's just some ter terrible things that we're seeing and, and really don't need to do that. Your older people like Maria was saying, you know, they don't have any supplies. They may not have any toilet roll. They may not have any no. food. We need to be very and careful. And it's our... very difficult for them to get yeah. to the supermarket. Yeah. Um, even though it's a walk, we've got two elderly people who have walkers and I actually had to say, listen, sweetheart, if you need to anything like toilet paper, we can get it for you because by the time she gets to the supermarket, mm -hmm. everything is gone and she has to end up using paper towels and serviettes. Yeah. And for me, knowing this 84-year-old woman breaks my heart. Yeah. So we just take her toilet paper. We will all make it through if we if we come together as a people rather than having a fight over a toilet paper. If somebody has none, give them some. It will come back. It will get carried out. There is always going to be issues in society and viruses, but we must act as a people and not as a frenzy out of fear so that we can look after people as well. I think it's very, 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 uh, oh, it's just a shame that people are doing this, yeah. you know? It breaks my heart yeah. because for an 84 year old woman, mm -hmm. not to be able to get toilet paper mm -hmm. in Australia, mm -hmm. I think to myself, where have we got to? Yeah. Where are we? Yeah. Yeah. Let's be yeah. better people. Yeah. Let's be the Aussies that we are. Maria, Let's be the people we are. That, yeah. that, is, that is so beautiful and Maria, it gives me tingles on my skin just, Truly. you know, you're, you're so positive and I think that's such a beautiful uh, perspective to take and I think we all should heed from Maria's lovely advice, you know, we're Australians, we're here for each other, we work yes. as a community and we can flatten that curve together. So just an update, I had a lovely lady come in, she was from Germany and 
she was telling me actually how Germans have responded to the coronavirus and she was saying in the streets everybody is literally on lockdown they, you can't go out unless you have a special permission from the government which allows you to have three hour access to say the shops or do the errands you need to do other than that if you are going out outside of those restric restricted times then they do actually have the military in full blown military gear patrolling the streets and making sure that there's nobody there who's unauthorised we can only hope that we're doing all of the right things you know Australia have stopped any visitors arriving into the country two uh, large airlines so Qantas and Virgin have stopped international flights now and there's no gatherings over 100 you know social distancing 1.5 meters so hopefully all of these measures are enough to help us just flatten that curve and just end this coronavirus uh, outbreak so I just saw another patient who was an older chap this time in his 70s and I asked him are you concerned about coronavirus and he said well not really, because the place that I'm living in, which is a high-rise apartment, uh, which is one of the tourist hubs actually of the Gold Coast, he said, there they're dealing with it very um, efficiently. They've got hand sanitizers. We don't have any foreign tourists or visitors coming in because of the flight bans. Um, so he's fairly confident that this will all pass over. So it's, it's very interesting to see how different people are reacting in terms of different age groups as well, where in one spectrum you get the younger people who might be a bit more concerned and have a bit more anxiety versus the older people who perhaps are I wouldn't say complacent but are you know they may have seen more things in their life and this perhaps is just another blip in the road so it's interesting to see the different viewpoints i can't wait to see the rest of my day and see what everybody else thinks as well so i'll keep you posted So a few other interesting consults that I've had so far in this shift, which I'm going to say is, a lot of it actually is to do with the coronavirus, which is unusual for me because usually it will get sort of, um, you know, earaches, you might get some mental health, maybe some depression, maybe some prescriptions, but actually a large proportion I'm finding of my consultations are actually related to the coronavirus. So um, I had another patient who is from France, she's French, and she also confirmed about the situation in France at the moment. Everybody is in lockdown. You have to get a special access from the police for you to be able to go and do your errands. And if you're found to not have your special permission access, which warrants you three hours to do your errands, then you actually are slapped with a 1,000 euro fine, which is huge. It is absolutely huge. I can understand why they're doing it because they want to make sure that um, the virus is not being spread. But she was saying that it's literally a lockdown. You can't go out. You have to just stay at home, eat the food that you've got, and then request for special permission to go out and get your shopping. So really, really interesting times. Now, I did also speak to a lady who actually was tested for coronavirus. So she actually had a close contact with a confirmed case of coronavirus and she was poorly one day. So her work sent her to the fever clinic in the local hospital where she had to wait for about 20 minutes until she got triaged. They use one of these swabs over here. So this is, as you can see, it's got a cotton tip on the end and it's got a flexible metal in the middle. I'll show you that. And essentially what happens is they have to test the coronavirus in through the nose. So it's a nasal pharyngeal swab so that means that it goes in through the nose right at the top to the back of the, the nose do it on both sides and they also have to do a throat swab as well and it's the same one that is used in those three locations um, in terms of the turnaround time she said to me that she had to self-isolate for two days and she got the results of her swab two days later which was thankfully negative and she's feeling a lot better now anyway so really interesting so that is the swab that you'll expect to have it looks pretty interesting I have to say. Um, we unfortunately don't test for coronavirus here because we don't have the full kits and in terms of what the uniform is like over in the hospital in the fever clinic apparently it looks like or it sounds like something from a, a movie set basically. Um, she said that all of the staff there are wearing blue gowns they're all covered up they wear something that covers their head and they tie it at the front they're wearing masks they're wearing goggles as well but they're also wearing gloves that basically come down to the middle of their forearm and they're just walking around <laughs> doing their business but that is what they do and this is a swab that they're using two sides of your nostrils either side all the way to the back and into the throat as well turnaround time is two days and uh, hopefully negative swabs all around i'm hoping for all right time to see the next one What's interesting is the patients who have to go into isolation, they're actually telling me that they are super bored at home. They are finding it really boring to stay at home and watching the paint on the walls dry. They really want to get out there and there's this positivity that they want to get better and they want to feel better as well. So I can imagine that going into isolation is, is very isolating. You, you know, you can't really communicate with anybody. You can't go out to the shops. You feel very, very restricted. So I can only 
feel sympathetic with these people and it can be a time where people you know start developing mental health problems such as anxiety or low mood as well so we certainly need to make sure as general practitioners and as healthcare professionals that we're looking after these people, whether it's through telecommunication, so calling them through the phone, making sure that they're happy, or whether it's just as simple as neighbors knocking on each other's doors and speaking through the letterbox or speaking through the door as well, just to check up on each other to make sure that we're all doing well. So that wraps up my shift here over in Surface Paradise. My last patient was lovely. He is a chap who's from China. His parents are in China at the moment and they were, he said there's a, a very big sentiment of paranoia over in China. Everyone's trying to get masks and they're all in self-isolation. So they're all completely in lockdown. And the last thing that that patient said to me, he said, thank you for you know looking after us and for all of the work that you do. So as a medical doctor, I know it's a lot of stress sometimes. We have to deal with a lot of issues, but it's really gratifying when our patients thank us and we like to look after you guys. We want to make sure you're nice and safe. So please make sure you always follow guidance, local guidelines with regards to um, protecting yourself, isolating yourself if you need to on quarantine as well. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up here and I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next shift to see how we go in Chinatown. Yes, we are bosses right now. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.